now how many of you are tired and how many of you are awake awake how many are tired i am also tired so let me wind it up fast right now so we are going to talk about t cell disease as i mentioned t cell lymphomas are relatively infrequent what is the algorithm that we have in a case of a t cell disease now you have heard us talk day throughout the day about cd3 positivity as a lineage defining marker for t however t cell lymphomas can also lack cd3 expression mm -hmm. and right now i am not venturing into nk cell lymphomas at all so if after you see the cd3 expression cd4 and 8 are a good guide to identify which lymphoma you are dealing with on a likely basis and then you obviously assess further antigens and do uh, further studies including ifc as and when required so you have a situation where you have double positivity for 4 and 8 very very likely as a mature t cell lymphoma you are dealing with tcls what are the other lesions that can be positive which can show cd4 8 maybe lack cd3 remember dr khalik's talk lack of surface b cytoplasmic b positive 4 8 dual positive tlm right so we are talking about tcl pd but whenever you have this situation at hand always remember to exclude t cell uh, uh, alm now the next situation is where it is a predominant cd4 positive population again these are your differentials you can have tcl you can have mycosis fungoids or sezeri syndrome you can have atll aitl and rare cases of tlg or alcl or ttcl now four negative eight positive lesions very very frequently what we deal with is large granular lymphocyte proliferation or lgl leukemia in this pattern is also seen with hepatosplenic t cell lymphoma for cd8 negative four negative our differentials are hepatosplenic t cell lymphoma along with that alcl and uh, uh, enteropathy associated t cell lymphoma so we have already discussed on the clonality assessment with that let us see a few cases you have a 52 year old male who was referred to us with a 3 cm palpable splenomegaly and history of fever if you look at the count borderline low platelet count and when you look at the tlc it is elevated 16860 with 81% of t cells so what is the uh, proliferation very likely large granular lymphocytosis right and if you look at the percentage of total lymphocytes and the percentage of lgls you have a very very high amount of large granular lymphocytes so looking at the cells here time plot singlet plot and the ndc plot and once you clean everything up you realize that you have a dominant population which is 45 positive so that entire population we are getting as lymphocytes so based on the 19 and 3 plot what do you see huge amount of cd3 positive cells so if we are to color all our cells we realize that the b cells here they are nicely fitting into the polyclonal pattern for kappa and lambda for the t cells the only marker that we have assessed till now is cd56 it is present on a subset these could be normal nk t cells as well so kappa and lambda quantified again this is okay for 20 and 4 b cell markers are all okay So what about the T cell markers? The minute you assess CD3 with CD5, what pops up? You have a split into these two populations. You have a population which is negative for CD5 completely, right? And this is also seen on the 5 and 38 plot. You have a population that is negative for CD5. When you look at 4 and 8, because this is uh, uh, T cells, we are looking at CD4 and CD8 and not 20 and kappa. so what we actually see here is that you've got a lot of eight positivity that appears to be more than the four positivity so if we if we are to color these uh, five positive and five negative populations separately we realize that among the five positive population you have a nice split of four and eight while the blue population appears to be positive only for eight so this can also be looked at in these separate plots where you're looking at the four eight split of these populations so the five negative population you have nearly 97 percentage cells that are expressing eight at a heterogeneous intensity so lgl proliferation cytotoxic in type and lacking cd5 so if we go to further tubes we realize that the same blue population is also positive for 16 bar 56 here both the antibodies are together so we don't know whether 16 is positive or 56 is positive so we will have to resolve it by putting them 
uh, in isolation. When you look at CD2 expression, you realize that the expression of 2 is also slightly lower. 7 also is slightly lower than the normal T cells, and it is 16 that is positive. Remember, we've already seen 56 when we, when we were looking at the gating strategy. So after that, we look at the 56 and 57 expression, and most of the blue cells actually express CD57. So what do we have? TLGL. Very good. So TLGL, and this has a sinusoidal pattern of infiltration on the bone marrow. So if you are to do a CD3 on the bone marrow, it feels like this is sort of moving around the adipose tissue or within the vessels. And this is the cytotoxic uh, perforin, which you can see here, that is positive. So incidentally for this patient, an NGS was sent, which showed a STAT3 mutation. Uh, the variant allele frequency came out to be low, but this also supported the uh, LGL uh, leukemia category of this patient. When we talk about LGLs, typically when you have proliferations, they are usually low in count, while LGL count is higher for LGL leukemia. Having said that, it is not necessary that all LGL leukemias will have a count of over 2,000. There are some patients with persistent cytopenias who definitely have LGLs. Most of the time, you will have positivity for CD8 and CD5 will be down-regulated. Variants which are CD4 positive have also been described and four positive cases will have an indolent course. So STAT3 and STAT5D mutations. STAT3 mutations are more often centered in the CD56 negative um, uh, TLGL, while, uh, uh, while uh, for uh, the STAT5B, it is more in the indolent T-cell lymphoma. And you can go through these uh, diagnostic criteria, which are from the WHO classification. So that is all accessible to all of us. Yes. So we'll go back to the NK and T-cell plot. So if you look at this, NK cells will be negative for 3 and will express CD56. So these are the normal NK cells. These are the NK T cells. Now, NK T cells in a normal peripheral blood would constitute anywhere from 10% to about 30% or so, maximum. And these cells, they also express a dimmer CD5 and they also express a dimmer CD8. Therefore, the phenotypic abnormalities in CD2, in CD7, they may be subtle, but they add to it, uh, add to the uh, diagnostic utility. Okay. So with that, we move to case 2. This is the image. It was a 45-year-old male who had a TLC of 1.2 lakhs. If you look at the cells on your right, that was the morphology from this case. And this particular patient also had splenomegaly. So if you look at the plot, say if you start from the forward versus side side of plot, what is the most striking abnormality? You are supposed to have lymphocytes, monocytes, and neutrophils. In an adult male, which should be the most dominant cell? Neutrophils. So here, what does it appear like? Everything appears to be like a lymphocyte. Very, very few cells in the mono and the neutrophilic region. So the forward scatter versus side scatter plot tells you that there is an abnormality. Now, when you get your lymphocytes, mm -hmm. you see here that again, most of these are your T cells. You don't, uh, these cells are polyclonal. CD5, expression normal, abnormal. 5 is as good as normal, right? Normal T cells also express bright CD5 and these cells also express bright CD5. What about 4 and 8 on the T cells? So it, they appear to be CD8 positive, but there is definitely a subpopulation that is co-expressing CD4, right? With respect to CD7 expression, again, the 7 is a... Usually my um, in my sample, my 7 lands up here. Even in the last one, you saw that. But here, 7 appears to be actually brighter. And CD2 is also expressed at a normal intensity. So these particular cells here, the 4 positive, uh, as well as the, the 8 positive population, which expressed or did not express 4, everything was gated. And you see that 2 and 5 are nicely positive. So what did I tell you? Differentials of 4 positive, 8 positive population are TPLL and TLL. So we tried to rule out TALL. So in the bottom plots here, you look at 19, 99, 18 TDT, everything appears to be negative. 99 in my uh, system takes up a lot of background. So that is the background we are seeing here. These cells, they express PCR alpha beta. They were also negative for 34 uh, as well as uh, HLA-DR. And they last 57 as well as 16 expression. 
and as expected t cells they can express cd43 normal t cells do and this pdl also did express cd43 so these were the markers that were positive and negative so we rendered a diagnosis of tpll here this is the typical phenotype of tpll and if you have a look at it cd4 is positive in the majority of the cases cd8 and 4 positivity is seen in about 25 to 41 percentage and only about 15 percentage cases are uh, uh, eight positive remember that dual positivity for 4 and 8 in a context of a mature t cell uh, lymphoma almost always is a tpll now, TPLL is also associated with a conventional karyotype. And in this patient in fish, there was deletion 11Q. We did not uh, uh, get uh, the uh, break apart for this one. So for uh, TPLL, the other thing that you can do if you have is this TCL1 staining, which is very specific for uh, TPLL. And this has to be assessed by permeabilizing. Morphological variants have been reported. And these are, again, the criteria by WHO 2002. You can go through these in your own time. So case three was a 38-year-old male with bicytopenia suspected HLH. You have cells on the right. What do these cells look like? T cell, nahi na? Abhi, I'm talking about T cell. Doesn't mean that these are T cells. Just because I'm here, they're not T cells. So this looks like these cells are large cells, very large cells, abnormal cells. They have vacuolation and they have a lot of, uh, they're sort of sticking together as well, right? So that is the morphology of these cells. So when you look at the plot here, so I've shown you 45 side scatter plot and then I've shown you CD3 and side scatter plot. I was not showing you three with side scatter at all. So why am I showing you that? So if we try the routine gating approach of gating 45 on the side scatter, 45 side scatter lymphocyte gate, we realize that on the three, we are missing something that appears to be dim CD3 positive. Is it not? Right? So if we extend the gate, we realize that now we have covered the entire population here. <laughs> so if we are to gate these three cells into two components, let us call the bottom cells as T cells and let us call the upper cells as DIM3 positive large cells. <clears throat> now you look at the CD2 expression. So CD2 in the normal cells is blue is here and your green cells, they are all over on the top. Four and eight in our three positive large cells, majority cells are four and eight negative, while our normal T cells, they are sort of showing this nice normal kind of a split. Now with respect to CD7 and CD5, both the green cells, they were dim three positive and they were large in size. You see that they completely nearly lack seven expression. Very few of them express a dim seven, while they are very bright for two. So based on the CD2 and seven expression, can we separate or tease out these populations further? We can, right? So two positive, seven negative cells and the normal T cells, we can call them. And if we have a look at all these markers, now the 4A split seems to be more in favor of dual negativity for our abnormal population, right? So we also look at other markers here. So these uh, DIM3 positive cells, they are expressing CD56. They are expressing a little bit of CD16. As expected, they are two positive. And these cells, they also express PCR gamma delta, okay? So in this case, what are the differentials? It is a four negative, eight negative, very, very blastoid abnormal looking tumor with a dim expression of surface three. That is the pattern that this case had. <clears throat> differentials, gamma delta T cell lymphoma, blastoid morphologies, HSTCL. However, HSTCLs usually have a brighter CD3 expression than the normal T cells. The other lymphoma that we can have is a anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So the IHC was done on the bone marrow in this case. It came out positive for CD30 and ALK1. So the final diagnosis given was ALCL, ALK1 positive. And remember that uh, for ALK1, you can have a situation where 20% of the tumors may not express any of the T cell antigens. So just doing flow and, and they can also be 45 negative. So sometimes when you start doing a T cell lymphoma, you gate only on the 45 positive cells, leaving the 45 negative cells behind. So keep that in mind when you are assessing uh, uh, any T-cell proliferation. The other thing to remember is that anaplastic large cell lymphoma may have very high scatters. So don't limit yourself to the 45 dim region because these cells, they are large cells, they have embryo-like nuclei, and they also have vacuolation very, very frequently. So this is from an example of a published case where you see that the scatter is 
nearly as high as the normal neutrophils. So this patient was started on CHOP therapy, did not agree for brentuximab. However, he presented with headache and vomiting three months post finishing the uh, CHOP therapy and we received the CSF for examination. So as Dr. Salik mentioned, in acute leukemias, you do CSF, maybe BLS, sometimes when they have CNS symptoms, you would get a sample. Even in lymphomas, when they have CNS symptoms, you will get fluid samples. Sometimes you may be diagnosing a lymphoma primarily on a fluid flow cytometry. So in this case, when you look at the flow, we did not restrict the 45 side scatter gate to only include the low scatter cells. We actually let it be a wide liberal gate. And if you look at the 2 and 7 split, remember that those cells were bright 2 and they lacked 7. If you have a look at these particular cells, they clearly are differentiated as 4A double negative and they also express CD3. So our anaplastic large cell lymphoma had actually hit the CSF by this time. So with that, do I stop, sir? I think everybody is tired now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So on this CSF, one more thing that I wanted to tell you was that if you look at the forward scatter versus side scatter plot and you look at the scatter of this cell, this is actually a head. So it has a high forward scatter and has an intermediate side scatter. And this also can be a useful tool in your hands. Okay, so now this is the last case. So this is a 20-year-old male. He has fever for two months. He has a, some skin rash, which is non-erythematous. Oral ulcers are present, spleen is enlarged, and we get this bone marrow suspecting h and h And the PS shows a leukoerythroblastic blood picture. Patient has bicytopenia. So on this plot, this is the lymphoid screening tube. If you have a look at the tube, you realize that 19 versus 3, you have your B cells nicely, you have your T cells. And what are these cells? The gamma delta T cells, right? They appear to be increased in number and they appear to be <coughs> more than usual, right? So the, now the other gating strategy is we exclude the B and now we pick up the NKT cells. The minute we do that, we realize that the gamma delta cells are expressing CD56 as well, right? So that is the pattern that comes up. When you look at CD5, these green cells, they also lack CD5 expression, right? So DCR gamma delta is positive, but CD5 is negative on these cells. What about CD4 and 8? 4 and 8 again is dual negative, and CD38 is present at a moderate intensity. So what do you think you're dealing with? The gamma delta proliferation, which is CD3 positive, and which is showing you lack of CD5. It is 4 negative, 8 negative. The patient has a spleen and you've received a marrow for h &H. Very likely diagnosis will be. So gamma delta proliferation or gamma delta lymphomas, if we think on top of our head, would be hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma, subcutaneous manipulitis T-cell lymphoma, which this presentation would not justify. And there is a cutaneous gamma delta proliferation. Again, does not justify. So very likely with the presence of the splenomegaly, with this pattern you're dealing with, hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma. So now if we go on, we realize that there is this population that is 5 negative, again colored green, 2 positive, 5 negative cells. They are also showing a down regulation of CD7. And these cells, they are 56 positive. And when you look at uh, 16 and 57, 57 is nearly absent in majority, while 16 is expressed at a dim intensity. So this patient was signed out as a hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma. And these lymphomas on the bone marrow, as you would see, would have a very characteristic intrasinusoidal pattern of involvement. Most of the cases will present with splenomegaly with or without hepatomegaly. HLH is very common in this, and many times they present with peripheral blood pancytopenia. And the pancytopenia can be very severe. The gamma delta type is more often, but that does not mean that alpha beta type cannot exist. Even that exists about 15 to 20 percentage of all cases, and it carries a poorer prognosis. Remember that in this, CD5 is usually negative. For LGL5 is down-regulated. For HSTCL, it is nearly always negative. They are usually double negative, but may show positivity for H. Morphologically, these look like TLA. 
and the arrows can have a bright cd45 expression so keep that in mind when you are assessing uh, uh, the cases and extremely bright 45 moderate side scatter higher forward scatter negativity for the immaturity markers and generally a very bright cd3 that helps you uh, diagnose a case as hstcl supportive pattern comes with the sinusoidal pattern of infiltration and these are the diagnostic criteria for uh, HSTCL. It is frequently associated with isochrome 7Q and trisomy 8. So now I will stop. And on this picture, you can give me the diagnosis. VPDCL, skin lesions are usually nodulous. So these skin lesions are erythematous. They are scaling, they are red lesions. And the cells here, can you see the convolution in the cell here? This is a Cesare syndrome. So thank you so much.